Spanish flamenco, and then we do music from Cuba and Mexico and Venezuela, and we just pick up stuff here and there. Mahavia, uh, our name comes from the word magic, Maha, and via meaning way or path, um, magic path. Um, Darren and I are both committed to following that drive us and it's led to an incredible life and a life with meaning um, and purpose and doing that which we love. It takes a lot of dedication, a lot of patience, um, but I feel ultimately really honored to be able to do this. So let's talk a quickly about the history of flamenco. Um, I mean, there's whole books written about it, so we're not going to really get into it very much. But basically, Spain, southern Spain, has always been a melting pot of cultures. Um, it was taken over by the Moors, who were Islamic culture from North Africa, um, around 980, and they were slowly pushed back out but they were around for like 800 years. So they left their cultural stamp, including their music. Um, and architecture. Architecture, I mean, that's where you kind of get the Moorish arches, you know, the Alhambra, all these places. Um, but flamenco is a real amalgam of um, Moorish music. Uh, there's a lot of Jewish influence. There's classical Spanish influence. That's kind of where the guitar came in. Um, of course, Flamenco is always associated with the gypsies, and that's what they're called. It's not a slur. <laughs> um, they proudly they're, say gitanos and yeah. gitanos, and they're flamenco gypsies. Right. Um, and they've been kind of, they were probably the first people to really start performing what we today call flamenco, although they didn't call it that when they were doing it. Um, and they've been the ones to kind of carry that torch, that tradition, and that music all the way from probably back to India, where the people think they originated from. Um, and it's changed a lot, but you can still see a lot of similar characteristics from classical Indian music and dance. Um, but it really just became this big melting pot of musical styles and influences and kind of carries that tradition on to today. Yeah, I mean, it really was, it wasn't for show. It was done in the homes. Right. Um, people start clapping, start playing, you know, for a long time, yeah, the guitar really wasn't involved. It was a mostly percussion dance and song and singing. And, uh, yeah, and then it's just keeps growing and taking things and, you know, uh, uh, evolving. <laughs>
with flamenco what's going on musically and this is something um, that can be very complex and yet very beautiful and um, so basically if you think of flamenco you have a singer a dancer a guitarist and then you have the basically percussion and it's done with hand clapping or bombas. So those are the four very basic components. And so basically when the singer's singing, everyone follows the singer. Then comes the dancer, and this is very simplified hierarchy, but uh, bear with me. The dancer then comes out and the guitarist and percussion will follow the dancer. And there's a big communication between the singer and the dancer. And the guitar, amazingly enough, is following both the dancer and the singer, keeping correct tempo, um, following the tones of the singer, and um, it can be crazy, huh? <laughs> oh man, but there's communication always, always. Just communicate as much as you can, especially when you're a beginner or a Westerner, like we are studying this. Uh, you communicate and what you come up with is just beautiful, uh, powerful music and art form. And, and I think one of the things that really draws me to it is the dynamics and how something can start out very slow and soft and crescendo and you don't think they can crescendo anymore but everything will crash and then they'll crescendo again and um, just that kind of epic emotion is just something that really drew me to flamenco. <laughs> Yeah, what about I mean, I think what really drew me to flamenco initially and keeps me like interested in it after 10 years, which usually I lose interest in things after a little while. Move on. <laughs> um, not women, of course. <laughs> um, but is like this real sense of flamenco isn't just this sort of static cultural art form that it was invented 200 years ago and everybody does it the same. Yeah now just like they did it then you just learn 
this formula. Like flamenco is always changing. It's always incorporating new styles and elements. I mean, there's a lot of jazz influence. There's hip hop. There's you know electronic music elements. Like it's always this sort of like growing amorphous musical form that you know it when you hear it. But it's always changing. People are always pushing the boundaries. Yet it still like remains rooted in this really ancient past, you know, this musical tradition, cultural tradition. Um, and so it's just, it's never boring. It's never repeating itself. It's always coming up with something new, something new to say about the world. And there's like protests in Spain that use flamenco as a form of social protest. Mm -hmm. and you know, flash mobs and stuff like this, like in the middle of banks, you know, where they're all, everybody breaks out on flamenco to protest something. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just really relevant still, and it's just really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just interested in classical guitar and so I was taking lessons from a guy in classical guitar and and he introduced me to flamenco and I was immediately smitten by it and I didn't know anything about it I didn't know anything about Spanish culture or anything but um, one thing led to another I met Juliana back in Boise she introduced me to a wonderful guitar Mark Ferguson also in Portland um, I studied with him for a few years and then, uh, what about five years ago or so? Yeah. Yeah. Five, five winters ago, um, I made it over to Spain for the first time to study in Granada, which is just a beautiful, magical city. <laughs> it's full of music and energy and life. And um, spent about three months there studying, which is as long as you can stay before they kick you out. Um, mm -hmm. And then did as much as I could back home and then went back to Spain again for a second round. And we were planning to go back last year, but yes. with the COVID thing, you know, no such luck. Here we are. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and I just, it's been a very strange, wonderful ro road, <laughs> you know, to follow, see where flamenco takes you and where music takes you. Um, I'm still just on it. <laughs> still yeah. Just going. Yeah. <laughs>
2008, I moved to Sevilla, Spain, and it was crazy. I ran into this acquaintance on the street. I didn't know she was also in Sevilla studying flamenco, and she grabbed me by the arm and said, come to this class I'm taking. The teacher is amazing. And it ended up being Concha Vargas, and um, she blew me away. <laughs> I... Uh, her presence was absolutely amazing, and I have to say I was completely terrified, and yet I knew I could not not study with her. Um, so I studied with her for a good six months during winter in Sevilla, winter 2008-2009, and um, every day, Monday through Friday, um, and she changed my life. Uh, she her force, her um, aire, her, the way she's able to uh, get into her emotions uh, is inspiring. And one day we were, um, we we're all in class, drilling, we're kind of tired. <laughs> uh, and she just wakes us up. She's just like, Mita, Mita, Mita. Like, if you're going to do flamenco, you have to be prepared to reach into your chest and pull out your bloody heart and show it to everyone. Uh, scars, pain, joy, all of it. Uh, don't be afraid to share that. And um, those words changed my life. go with me every time I'm going to go out and perform, and um, yeah, it was an honor to study with her. <laughs> Ole! Here's to flamenco and art and music. Vamanos!